In this screencast, I'll show you how to calculate vapour liquid equilibrium using the Peng Robinson equation of state. So, step one of the theory is that when a system of vapour and liquid are in equilibrium, the chemical potential of each component in both phases must be equal. So, we've got this equation here, and that is the same as saying that the fugacity of each component in both phases must be equal. So we've got this equation here, equation 2. So fugacity of component I in liquid phase must equal the fugacity of component I in the vapour phase. OK, step 3. The fugacity of a component in a mixture can be expressed in terms of the fugacity coefficient. So for the liquid phase, fugacity of component I equals pressure times fugacity co coefficient of component I for the liquid phase times the mole fraction of component I in the liquid phase. For the vapour phase we've got the equivalent here except now we've got the vapour phase fugacity coefficient and the vapour phase mole fraction. OK, step 4. If we substitute equations 3 and 4 into equation 2 we get this equation here. Now the p's cancel out so step 5 is to eliminate those p's and to rearrange. So we have yi, the mole fraction of component i in the vapour phase, equals the ratio of these fugacity coefficients times by the mole fraction of component i in the liquid phase. You will also see this written as yi equals ki xi, where ki is this ratio, and it's the equilibrium ratio for component i. So we can use this now to work out vapour liquid equilibrium using Peng Robinson. So I'm going to take the example of methane, ethane and propane where there's a, a, a liquid composition of 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 respectively for these different components. I've also selected a temperature of 233.15 Kelvin and I've just put in an initial pressure of 0 0.1 megapascals. Now the pressure will need to vary in order to work out where the equilibrium is for this vapour liquid system. And we we'll also need to calculate the vapour phase composition. Now just as an initial guess I put in the values for the liquid phase. So these are going to be wrong but just as an initial guess values here I've got those. And what we'll need as we've seen from the theory are the fugacity coefficients for the liquid phase components and the vapour phase components. So to set this up and to make this work, we need to determine the fugacity coefficients for this system at these compositions. So I've got a spreadsheet that does all of this. And this is very similar to the spreadsheet that you've seen in a previous video about fugacity coefficients. So it has all the data, it does all the calculations for us. It solves for Z. Now we're interested in the liquid phase in this case, so we've got fugacity coefficients for all three components in the liquid phase. And so that's what we've just translated. You have just use the transpose function to get them to go downwards instead of across. So these are just those exact values from this spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is drawing its data and its information from the VLE spreadsheet. So the pressure, the temperature, um, the mole fractions, everything is coming from here. Now we have to do the same for the vapour phase. So there's a spreadsheet that is working everything out based on, again, the temperature and the pressure from our main spreadsheet for VLE. We've got all of these values plugged in. These mole fractions are now the mole fractions in the vapour phase. Uh, these are our guesses, our initial guesses and everything's worked out again to solve for Z and determine the fugacity coefficients. Now you'll notice these ones this time are, it's this row that is of interest at the moment, the vapour phase ones. If there was only one route then it would be the top line that we we're interested in. So we have just used a little if function to make sure that we're getting the relevant fugacity coefficients there. Now to determine YI uh, an improved calculated value, we just plug in the equation that we saw from the theory. So that's xi times fugacity coefficient in the liquid phase 
divided by fugacity coefficient in the vapour phase. And that gives us uh, an improved estimate. But as you can see, these values don't add up to 1. So we need to normalise them here. We've got values there. And we can sort of plug those in if we go here and paste in the values and we sort of start to make improvements here but this this pressure is too low uh, that pressure is going to have to go up in order to make this work as well so for example if I put in a pressure of one you can see this is getting closer back down to back to one that we need that to be a value of one um, but we need these scaled values to help us to sort of iterate we could keep iterating by copying and pasting these in here by keeping on playing with the pressure here the easiest way actually is just to set this up in solver so we're going to tell solver to make this value here a value of 1 and we're going to achieve that by varying the pressure and these com this composition in the vapour phase we're also going to add some constraints whereby these compositions here, these scaled normalised values have to equal these guess values so once this all comes to equilibrium and working that's that's what should happen these should iterate until it equals those ones and this should equal one and this pressure should be adjusted until that all happens so if we press solve click OK it's now found the pressure for us of 1.22644 megapascals and it's found a composition where this all matches up so the scaled values equal the guess values and the sum of these calculated values equals 1. So overall that is how we can use uh, the Peng-Robinson equation of state to determine vapour liquid equilibrium.